to Consultant Spotlight. This is the show where we take a look behind the curtain to help you get to know us and our consultants a little bit better. My name is John Hovey, and today I'll be talking with John Henry. He's a lead consultant and an expert in startups, strategic planning, much more. And we'll take a look at what's going on in his consulting practice right now. Uh, we'll have time to answer all of your questions as well. So today in the spotlight, as I mentioned, is John Henry. He's an expert in business planning. And in fact, John, you've been a uh, teacher and consultant for 25 years, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm sure mm -hmm. you have a lot to share today. Let's get started. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How about yourself? Oh, doing well. Doing well. It's great to see you. Likewise. So uh, I do want to hear more about your your background here in a few minutes, but let's um, you know let's dive right in. You know, tumultuous times right now. We've just had an election. We've got the pandemic still ravaging the the country, and it's tax preparation time. So. What's going on? What should somebody who is either starting a business or in business here in Colorado be paying attention to right now? What are you seeing? Well, uh, just like in any other time, John, I think the bottom line is where your focus always has to be. You know, cash is king and you need it to, to survive. And uh, the things I'd be looking at would be cost controls to make sure you've got everything uh, under uh, covered so that You've cut where you can make the cuts to the bone in some cases. I know a lot of businesses have done that. And on the other side of it, uh, try and secure as much of your market share as you can or increase it. Uh, and a lot of companies are going with promotional items that uh, bring in cash now to keep them, keep the cash flowing uh, with uh, attachments further downstream where you buy one now and subscribe to a particular product, whatever it might be. And you uh, see the the gain of uh, I'm sorry, reap the rewards of that in future months. Um, I think uh, one of the things we could do is take stock of our assets, um, both physical and intellectual, and see you know just t um, make a, make a list and see what things you do well, and how you might be able to redirect some of those assets. Uh, a couple of examples that have occurred uh, just here in Colorado. Uh, last summer, uh, there was a distillery. It was up in Weld County, one of the smaller towns up there, but they were making vodka and they switched their production over to uh, sanitizer. And here they had all the equipment in the process in place and just that they're creating a different liquid now, which is probably healthier for us in, in more than one way. Um, another company locally in Boulder, um, a company called Boco Gear, um, who manufactures uh, custom headwear primarily for the uh, for the running trade, the marathoners and folks that uh, get involved in those things. And uh, they do hats and visors and uh, gloves and backpacks um, and everything is custom made. And of course they lost a lot of, there's a, a big share of their business. Uh, their main, uh, their largest customer is uh, the, um, God's name slips my mind now, uh, oh boy, Iron Man, the Iron Man. Okay, Iron Man is an organization, they put on 150 events around the world, most of them here in the U.S. And that's, uh, Iron Man is Boco's biggest uh, customer. They canceled 149 of the 150 events this year because of COVID, which was a big shock to this company. But what they did was they redirected their efforts and now they're making masks. So where they were making hats and gloves and beanies and things like that in the past, they redirected those uh, their assets to um, to to the uh, mask business, and um, it's helped. It's actually become a, I think it was a third of their business at the end of last year, and they donate a lot to the essential uh, or workers and organizations, fire departments, police departments, the hospitals, not. They're not of medical, of the of the medical quality that are required in the hospitals, but they're there for estimax, extra mask in case you show up at a hospital to visit someone, or you have some delivery you're making there and you don't have a mask, they'll give you one on the way in. So those are just a couple of examples here, but I think the the bottom line again is uh, tighten the belt, um, keep an eye on the bottom line as as, as always, and and save where you can and try to redirect your effort, your efforts uh, 
uh, where they can be best be return some good results for you. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, you know, for a, a business owner, I think one of the services that, that you provide and that the SBDC tries to provide is a little bit of uh, that sort of external viewpoint to help people identify those sort of opportunities and pivots. How did you become a consultant? How did you get started in this field? Oh, oh it's a long <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, many moons ago, I, uh, I started, I was a delivery driver for UPS and uh, worked my way up into management. And from there, I uh, was back on the East Coast and uh, was working with them in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, back in the 70s when, uh, and in that job, I became, one of the things I, uh, one of the uh, fields I became pretty uh, familiar with while I was at UPS was industrial engineering. And they do a they do a lot of that. They do an excellent job of planning their operations as, as evidence of the success that they had. Um, in the 70s, uh, I was there 14, 15 years and looking to make a move and heard about this company called Federal Express that was just starting up. And mm -hmm. uh, a fellow who worked for me in, in uh, upstate New York uh, with UPS was brought into the vice president level and was Putting the, heads, putting, putting the staff together for FedEx. So I went and we called them Federal Express in those days, went and interviewed with them. And uh, there were five of us that went over there. Three of us were involved in the original operating plan, not the business plan, but the operating plan of the nuts and bolts of getting pack shipments moved from point A to point B and through the airline system and whatnot. And then uh, continued on in management and got involved in quite a few startups. Uh, when they went international in the 80s, I was uh, my last position with them was as managing director in Canada, and we opened up the Canadian operation, uh, nine cities all on one day in June of 82, I think it was. So I've always been involved with planning, and like I'm a numbers guy. I always like math and was one of my strong suits, I think. And uh, But after a while, it got to the point where... Uh, I uh, had enough of the corporate world and decided to go out on my own with another FedEx guy. And we started a local uh, delivery company, uh, uh, transportation company here in the front range, and also doing some work up into the mountains on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And uh, did that for, oh, I guess we had the business for nine years and eventually sold it to another company down in Denver. Our focus was uh, here in the Boulder Denver corridor, which was being underserved, we felt at the time. And, was a good opportunity for us to step in and, and make a present, have our presence felt. So we, uh, I left there, and at the same time, uh, when I, I'm sorry, left FedEx, started with them, and one of the traffic managers of a company that we served in Boulder, uh, I got become pretty good friend, friendly with him, and told me about the logistics program that Front Range was just starting up, and suggested I might want to look into becoming a uh, uh, as a faculty advisor. So I attended a meeting or two, and the next thing they know, I know they asked me if I'd want to teach some courses. So I started teaching the logistics courses and then migrated into management and eventually small business management and entrepreneurship. So I taught the small business management courses for about 10 years and uh, entrepreneurship for about the last five years and did that for 25 years, believe it or not. And then during that process, um, met the fellow who was responsible for the Small Business Development Center, headquartered or housed, domiciled right there at Front Range, and uh, became a consultant, uh, working for him and dealing with small business uh, advocates or entrepreneurs, if you will, uh, for the last nine years now. That's so let's cool. go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, it's a lot going on in the... Um... UPS and FedEx and last mile delivery sector nowadays, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, I, unfortunately, I have a, uh, I have a son-in-law who's uh, he's one of the senior managers for FedEx in the, in the hub system in the, in the, uh, the airline movement. And uh, they got clobbered with an ice storm down in Memphis. And unfortunately, it made the news locally here. I heard it nationally that 
some of the they're doing a lot of the vaccine movement and people were concerned about it but everything is uh, it's stored in heavy uh, refrigerated uh, containers and, and lockers in the in memphis and i think it should be moving out here or have if it hasn't by now it probably did the last day or two but they've been they were very successful the pandemic was uh, a good thing for them actually their business mm -hmm. increased and their stock was off the charts uh, fedex had all time you know, high here in the late summer last year so two good companies i was fortunate enough to work for and get some good experience and uh, i still believe they're the best they are at what they do and uh, have very good strong management uh, organizations you bet i'm gonna go off script here but is it true that ups drivers are not allowed to turn left i heard that that they can only well, make turns <laughs> no that's a good question though uh it's been proven that there there's a lot more accidents made on left hand turns than there are on right hand turns so the routes are designed so that when you go from one street to the next or one block to the next you turn right as much as you possibly can of course there's always going to be times when you have to make a left but uh it just uh it's just been proven that it's a lot safer and they they focus well they're so they've always been self-insured uh liberty mutual was their insurance company way back when i was there but they just had minutes to their programs but fedex or i'm sorry ups actually paid the claims and set aside uh, uh funds to handle that so but they're, they're very well scaled and uh, I should say very well schemed in the safest way to get around a neighborhood. That's pretty neat. So if someone has never uh, taken a consulting session or is not familiar with the SBDC, or maybe, you know, sometimes people that I talk to say, uh, you know, I'm just getting started. I'm not ready for a consulting session. Um, can you talk a little bit about what's involved in establishing a relationship with uh, a, cust uh, a client and a consultant and, and how the sessions work? Sure. Uh, Tim, most of the sessions that, that uh, we conduct are startups to begin with. Uh, or, you know, they make a phone call, they're looking for information, but most of the time they're looking to start a business. And um, it was a lot easier when we did it face to face and we could, you know, get more in depth and some. It's a little more difficult doing it over the phone the last year or so. But what we do is just quiz them about what their goals are, what their what their uh, what their intentions are as far as the business goes, and um, and after we've done that and got a good feel for well a feel for how, where where they're at in the planning process or the or what the level of their business knowledge is, let's say, okay. Uh, we'd go through a checklist. There's a few items that you have to do that we could call them legalities or whatever. But there's about five things that we, you know, we need to make sure they understand. Number one, in the state of Colorado, you have to register your trade name with the Secretary of State. And then secondly, um, select the business format the form, whether you want to go LLC or sole proprietor or uh, S corp. And we talk about the, the, the uh, we, def we explain the advantages and disadvantages of both. Uh, then the, uh, they need to apply for an EIN, employer identification number, which is the IRS number that's assigned to that business and sort of acts as the social security number for the business. And it's used when there's any transfer of funds when you withhold wages, or, I'm sorry, withhold taxes from an employee's wages. At some point you have to deposit them with the IRS and this is the reference number and the account that you have that that uh, makes it uh, easier to, to accomplish that. Uh, business liability insurance, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty much a must these days and the, the litigious society that we live in, you always wanna be sure you're covered because you never know what you're gonna get sued for and by whom, so. And then lastly, uh, checking account. Checking account uh, is, it's, um, it's necessary if you're going to be doing electronic transfers with the IRS, and it's certainly and it's a credibility thing. If you just go in there as John Hovey and say, "Well, I've started this new business, and here's what I do, and whatever," and offer you certain consulting services or marketing, and you pay for your whatever materials you might be buying with your out of your personal check it, checking account, it just looks a lot more professional if you have your own and. The main, uh, then maybe maybe not the main reason for it is that tax time 
it's a lot easier to separate those expenses rather than having to go through 12 months of receipts and figure out what was a business expense and what were personal. So it just makes it a lot easier. Okay, uh, then <clears throat> at, at the uh, having done that, I always like to stress with the client the necessity to have a business plan. And they say, well, why? Well, uh, there's a few reasons. Uh, number one, you're making a major investment in a lot of cases. Um, in some cases it might not be, it might be just a sideline or a, a hobby that you've taken to the business level now. Uh, but it can be a life-changing experience. And if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it right. And the uh, little known fact, or maybe not that little known, but the number one reason that business, small businesses fail is insufficient funding or the lack of having a business plan to project the amount of money that they're going to require until they hit that break even point. So again, uh, you're at point A, you want to get to point B, and this in effect becomes the roadmap of the things you have to do to make that journey, okay? And um, I explained to them that um, it's, it's always good to step back and get the big picture, ask the what if questions on the front end, what if this happens? What if we have a pandemic? What if there's a, a major competitor comes in, a, comes, moves in nearby or comes to town that hadn't been here before? What if there's a, changes in the in, the, in regulations, okay? Uh, traffic wise or whatever it might be, uh, OSHA changes, anything that, anything that might impact that business. So you just wanna be prepared and have a plan B, if you will, uh, in your back pocket. So I take them through the, uh, the process for the, uh, for the business plan. And there's two types. The traditional business plan is the one that we, a lot of folks have been, have studied in college and are familiar with where you go to the bank and you present something that's 15 to 20 pages long. It has a lot of bar, you know, uh, pie charts and bar graphs and spreadsheets. And you're trying to make your case with the, with the bankers that you know, this is something that they should support you on and, and lend you some money. So that's the one that uh, you're going to have to, it's a requirement if you're going to go to the bank, okay? The bank requires that. Along with that, they want a cash flow uh, budget that projects two years out on a monthly basis what the cash flow is going to be in and out of the business, okay? And they also want to continue that for a third and fourth year in most cases. Some banks require a fifth year, but it's only an annual budget at, at that stage, okay? Uh, the uh, the business plan itself has six elements to it. The first one is the company description, where you just tell what you're doing, where you're doing it, or you or you have a brick and mortar uh, uh, brick and mortar experience, or you're doing it online, or do you go to them? However, you perform your services or get your products uh, out to the customer. And uh, then the, the second one is product the uh, the products and services, what are you selling, what services are you providing, whatever that might be, you know, the whole, uh, you know, the, the, the whole uh, network of them. And then uh, market research, okay, there's two, um, there's two, two marketing elements in it. The first one is what they call market analysis, where you actually do the market research uh, portion of the, of the uh, marketing. And a lot of people do, you know, that's difficult to do for a small business because there's a lot of, not a lot of information out there. And the main sources for these, uh, for gathering this, this information, you might, you might uh, subscribe to a local marketing uh, executive. We have a couple that work for us as consultants or the local office of economic development. If you're in Westminster or Broomfield or wherever you're at, you can check in with them and see what, what, uh, what numbers are, what kind of demographic information they can provide for you. There's also a, um, an organ a site online called, I would call it Refusa. It's R-E-F-U-S-A. It stands for Reference USA. <clears throat> and it's only available for whatever reason, and I don't know why, through the library system. So you have to go to the library and you check in with the local librarian. It's password uh, protected. She'll, she'll set you up with a uh, with a, uh, at a at a station, and you can gather the information that you require and then be on your way. And then beyond that, um, the management structure, which is just basically you know who always working. It's like an org chart. Who 
what the responsibilities are of the different individuals that are going to be working in the company. Sales and marketing, which is again marketing uh, comes into play, which is the actual sales and marketing plan, which shows you how explains how you're going to go about gathering business and marketing your product to the customers. And then lastly, uh, finance. And here is where you do your, uh, you, you, you want to do your, your uh, uh, P&L budget. I'm sorry, your, your cash flow budget, your P&L statement, your balance sheet, your so on. So those are the, 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 uh, the six uh, major elements. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I've, uh, I've talked to the bankers and worked with them. Pardon me. And a couple of cases actually gone with the client to the bank because they felt a little bit nervous and weren't, uh, you know, sure that they'd have the right answer. So I'd go along to sort of hold their hand, if you will, or just be there to support them. And the bankers spend the fo the focus of the banker or the lender is twofold: the marketing analysis and the financial element of the budget. And in the marketing analysis, they want to be sure that you've done your homework, that there is a need for the product out there. A lot of folks uh, had come up with some great ideas, and uh, I've had people come in and want to, you know, their grandmother makes great uh, pasta sauce or, or whatever it might be, and their the family loves it, the neighbors love it, they take it to work, and they're selling it for five dollars a jar in the office. And now they they want to go they want to go public with it and, and establish a business. And that's fine, but uh, you have to think a little bit beyond that and make sure that there is a market out there. And and part of that market analysis that sometimes uh, sort of slips by the boards is the uh, competitive analysis, because there's competitors for every business. And in the competitors, in that, you want to identify who your competitors are, uh, know what they do well, and what they do not so well, and try to take advantage of the latter and position yourself so that if I'm going to be making the purchase decision, I'm going to come and buy from you as opposed to my competitor. So uh, those are those are the things that the, the uh, and of course the the finance is the one the uh, the financial aspects of it. The, the, there's some there's a a, a uh, uh, sort of an unwritten code, but a, 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 a a list of priorities that the bankers look at in terms of what your credit rating is, how much cash you bring to the, uh, to the uh, table, how much you're looking to loan, and the collateral that you're going to post against that loan. So those are the things that they focus on on that side of it. So that's it. so. I, and, I, and I try to go through and explain to them that it's again going back to the point A to point B analysis, or it's it's something that. You know, if you're going to make go on vacation or take a trip somewhere, uh, we don't usually jump in the car and just take off. Sometimes we do on the weekend, just to you know, especially these days, <laughs> to get out of the house, and get out and get some fresh air. But if you're making a major trip, you know, you're going to go on. You're, you're going to fly. You're going to get plane airplane reservations. You're going to get hotel reservations. And you're going to plan this thing out. So if you're going to do that, you know, you might as well do the same thing and do it the right way here, with with a good business plan. And then the and the, the one thing in closing is that this is a this is a living document. Uh, years ago, it used to be something you'd write the plan, and you go to the bank and you'd get your loan, or you didn't. If you got your loan, fine. And then you took the business plan and you put it in the four drawer file cabinet over in the corner of the office. And the only time you saw it was come April when it was time to go in there and dig out all the tax documents that you need. So this way, uh, now it's done. It's done electronically. So you just keep it on. You save it, your business plan as a file on your computer, and whatever schedule you feel you need to to to, to uh, put up for it, whether it's a weekly, monthly, just go back to it and take a look at it and see how are we tracking. Are we doing what we said we were going to do at a certain point in time? Whether it be uh, increase in business, the amount of when our sales got to a certain point. We're going to add another product, let's say, or get into another process or open another location and those types of things and just keep referring back to it. So that's sort of a, a lengthy explanation of it, but I, I'm a firm believer in that, uh, uh, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So that's that's uh, really, really critical when it comes to this and uh, particularly more so in the more even before the pandemic. 
it's been more com the marketplace is very competitive in every aspect. So you just want to be sure you're doing it the right way and, and be prepared from the get go. Wise words. So everything that we do at the SBDC is is confidential between the consultant and the client. But I'm wondering if without uh, violating that, do you have any success story of a client that you could share? Uh, well, actually, I do, and um, and I will <coughs> violate that uh, confidentiality only because I've cleared it with the owners and told them that I'd be talking to you today. And um, one of the first um, major businesses I got involved with was back uh, about seven, eight years ago. And a uh, young couple, both professional folks, the wife was a, 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 a elementary school teacher, the husband civil engineering with a good position in a, in a nice engineering company, uh, had decided that to open a swim school. And uh, so we talked about, they come in and uh, had a nice conversation and come to find out that they both swam, the husband swam competitively. And uh, he was from Texas and uh, during college and after that for a while, he worked for at a swim school down in the Houston area, which had been in business for 45 years and expanded from one employee to a hundred employees. And by now had opened their fourth one, every one of them uh, very profitable from the second year on. And they want to do the same thing here in, in Broomfield, matter of fact. So we talked about, so actually they had them as a, as a business plan, they had the model of the company that he had worked for in Texas. So we just took it and massaged it a little bit, plugged in the demographics and the financials for the marketing and the, and the money side of it and uh, to fit the picture here. But the thing I was concerned about was one mile south of there on Sheridan Boulevard was the Westminster Rec Center with a pool. And a little over a mile in the other direction is the Paul Derta Center in Broomfield with a pool as well. And my concern was whether they could make it work or not. Well, uh, long story short, two years later, uh, the Broomfield Chamber of Commerce nominated them as the business of the year here in, in Broomfield. They've grown to where they've got 22 employees now. Uh, they've got like 450 students who come on scheduled basis, but their emphasis, I mean, this is not the typical startup business because they did have a good plan to work from. They knew it would work because it had before. They just had to manage it and do it properly. But the uh, the attention and, and the instruction that they gave, uh, all of their instructors are naturally certified and experienced as opposed to what the competition was offering in the area. But it's been a very successful company um, huge startup expense in the six-figure area, both in what their contribution and what the bank lent them. But they put it in a shopping, existing shopping mall. Uh, again, there's a lot of these vacant malls. We see them all over, even before the, the – uh, I see we're running late. I'm, I'm, I'm just checking the time. <laughs> I'm hoping right. I'm going over time. But in any event, there were two vacant stores there. One was a Sherwin-Williams paint store, and I think the other was a gift shop mix. And they'd been vacant for like six months. So the developer was desperate. He needed tenants. And he agreed to do some of the leasehold improvements. And you, you can just visualize coming into to a, a gift shop and having to excavate and dig out five feet deep a pool the length of the store. And uh, actually, they made it work. And they've been very successful with it. So that was uh, that was one I'm really proud of. And I'm proud of them. They do a great job. Congratulations. That's fantastic. That is really good. Well, we are running a little uh, little over time, but that's okay. I just want to ask you one more question. Sure. You know, how do you stay motivated and inspired? Why do you Why do you do this work? Uh, sometimes it's it's a uh, it's 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 tough to do that, but I I think the the thing that I get the most uh, pleasure out of is talking to people who come in and have a, a they're trying to accomplish their dream. Of, or fulfill their dreams. And a lot of times these are life-changing experiences. People take risks. Uh, people start businesses for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes it's something they've always wanted to do. You know, the saying is, uh, find something you love to, love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. And they've been trying to live that dream. A lot of times they get burnt out on the job they're on. Uh, they get into politics, they get into jobs where p 
politics comes into play and drives them into the you know, into the corner, if you will, and they sort of just cover up and hide until it's time for retirement. And they and I, they know they have more to give, and as a result, they want to take that and 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 develop it into something that they can call their own and and build and really uh, uh, have a new oper opportunity that they can control. And control is important too. I should mention. It's a lonely world out there for the uh, for the small business uh, uh, entrepreneur because you have to wear all the hats. You're calling all the shots. You're the main guy. You're the you know the chief executive. You're the salesperson. You're the marketing person. You're the accounting person. You're the IT person. If you have those uh, abilities, and if you don't, naturally, you don't want to hesitate to go out and get people that can do it for you. So it's it is a but at the end of the day. Uh, Everything that you know, all the results that come come as the fruits of that effort are all yours, and you can be be thankful for that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, John, for coming on the program today. It's been uh, really great to talk to you. Uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they have any questions? Uh, well, you can get us online or call our local number at 303-460-1032. And I'm always here to speak to people. You know, we do it virtually now. In fact, I had a young lady this morning and two or three others this week. But always glad to sit and chat with you and help you with, uh, you know, just pointing in the right direction and be of uh, be of whatever aid we can. I always think of our, our role as uh, coaches or advisors. And you do the work, but uh, and they, and and that's at the startup, and they, and then as time goes on, the sounding board. That's important because someone, when you're out there again, you know, if it's I'm thinking I'm look, talking about local startups, one person operations, and you have an idea, and you think, well, should I or shouldn't I, or what's the bottom line going to be here? What's the net effect? Well, we're here to bounce. You know, if you want to bounce that office, we can discuss it, kick it around, and talk about other options if that's not something that looks viable but we're just here for you and we're here to make you successful that's right that's right well thank you again so much uh, for our audience you know i'd like to remind you that uh, we are brought to you today by the north metro small business development center sbdc and john henry and all our consultants are, are standing by for free and uh confidential one-on-one -on -one consulting appointments you can find out more at North Metro SBDC or indeed call that number, as John mentioned, and uh, we will set you up with an appointment and help you move forward towards your dreams. As you said, John, I think that's uh, that's a really great way to look at it. So thank you so much. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, just keep on track, John. I like the job you're doing. And uh, you've been with us for about a year now. and really turned out some great programs and I'm, I'm glad to have you as a partner oh thank you john i appreciate it I really do all right well we'll see you on the next one and uh thank you everyone for tuning in thank you so much john hope you have a great you day bet. my pleasure thank you john